Hello, welcome to episode 4 of the shape digging excavation tutorials. Um, so last video we ended up um, with our turtle on the outside of the ring there. It, it can dig the the entire circle and actually stop once it's done. Um, and now what was uh, left to do was just dig out the rest of the middle. And as you can see I actually managed to do that. Um, the method I used is pretty rubbish in my opinion but it works. Um, it's not efficient whatsoever <laughs> but I couldn't be bothered to think of something else because it would require writing another the function for digging out the middle and it, it, it was just it, it was just a pain so I, I just went for the simple solution the, the not so simple but uh, oh sorry the, the not so efficient but simple solution which we'll get to in a second um, yeah I guess we'll, I'll just show you what I did um, so here we go. This is the wrong screen. That's what we need. Um, so the first thing I added is in the the digging of the ring, because um, at the end of the digging we ended up on the side uh, facing outwards. So what I do is I just turn around, uh, go back to the middle, and turn around again. So I'm uh, back into my starting position after digging uh, a ring. Now what I made up for um, actually digging out the entire area is. Um, <laughs> rather than uh, digging out the outer ring first and then um, digging out the middle what I'm going to be doing is just um, digging lots of rings and making them gradually bigger um, so it's <laughs> basically we're going to be doing dig ring um, a number of times or well the number of times is exactly radius because we're going to be starting at one a, a, r a ring of radius one and then going all the way up to the actual radius slowly in a for loop um, so, um, basically it's what I've got written down here, that's why this area um, has already been dug out because I just tested it to see if it wouldn't somehow miss blocks or something, because um, I was a bit afraid that once I got to the outer rings it would start missing blocks, and I'm still not sure, I, g I get the feeling that it might actually miss some blocks if you make it too big, um, but maybe it won't, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, which would be better, uh, but it works on uh, anything up to 15 radius at least, <laughs> so that's good, um, and I don't know <laughs> if it will actually ever miss any blocks, but who cares, it, get, it gets most of this stuff anyway. Um, so here's what it looks like, um, I didn't put this in a function yet, I just put it as a program, so I'll make this dig layer I guess, uh, function dig layer, and we'll put all of this, indent it by one, and that there. So what I do is I actually I um, store the the radius that we get at the beginning um, in this uh, variable for a minute just to keep it somewhere. Um, then I start a for loop. So for one until the radius, um, we're going to be going to the edge and digging a ring, which is basically the the two functions we were working on the last episodes, and uh, we're increasing the radius by uh, one every time. So we start with a ring with the radius of 1, then make a ring of radius 2, and so on um, until you've dug out the entire area up to the radius you want. Um, doing this means that you're covering the same ground uh, twice, or sometimes three times maybe. Actually no, probably not more than twice. Um, but yeah, and you're going back and forth because after every uh, ring you dig you go back to your starting point and then you go back out to the edge again. So there's a lot of wasted time, wasted fuel, um, so it's, it's pretty rubbish. But um, um, you could probably think of ways to make it more efficient yourself, um, but for now I couldn't be bothered to muck about with that. Um, I mean, the obvious thing you can do is not go um, back to the middle after you've finished a ring, but just continue where you are and move out one again, and then uh, make the ring, but um, you'd have to just uh, get rid of this bit, um, and then uh, before you dig the next layer you turn, or you go forward and look to your left one, um, and then you start the dig layer and you don't do the uh, go to edge or the dig ring I mean um, so that's that basically actually that wouldn't be too hard to do I could do that fairly easily thinking about it um, whatever I'm not going to do it though so um, am I done now is that it? I'm going to have to put it in a function that was it so we got we store the radius start a for loop with that stored radius there and then the actual radius we're using uh, would substitute that for i so that goes through one up until the radius, go to the edge, dig the ring, um, and then you're done. 
So we got a dig layer. Now what we guess what we can do is just um, uh, function dig uh, cylinder. There we go. And all that's going to do is for um, i is equal to one until height uh, do dig layer. That's about it, I guess. Um, one more thing, after we've dug the layer, um, I'm just thinking about when I want to move down a square. Uh, when do I want to do that? See, I could either do it in here, so dig layer and then move down, or... Well, I definitely want to do it in here, don't I? Yeah, I guess I'll do it in here. Um, move down. I'm just thinking about the way I'm dealing with this radius thing, because it's really not not good. The problem is that I'm using... Uh, in these functions up here, I'm, I'm using radius as like a global variable. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm editing the global variable in this uh, thing here, which is not ideal. <laughs> I would rather have it be constant. Although I mean, at the end of this for loop, it does end up at its original value again, but <laughs> it's still a bit ugly. Uh, I'm okay. I'm not going to worry about it. I might change it next episode or somehow, but it'll do for now. It'll do for now. Um, another ugly thing is that uh, our, on our final layer we're going to be moving down when we don't really need to, so that's also a little bit stupid, but too bad. I'm getting a bit sloppy. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that, but whatever. Um, so now one more thing we need to do is um, get our height and radius um, from the input, the user input. Uh, to do that, what you can do is you can uh, create a array, an array I should say, um, and what you do uh, to get user input is you put in three dots, I believe it is, if I'm correct. I'm not. I can't remember whether there's a space in there or not. If there is, if there is, if there's supposed to be a space, um, it won't moan at me probably. Just try something like this. Takes, oh, did I misspell that? Unexpected symbol one. So I guess um, there's no. Damn it. Or was it two? Might have been two. Let's try that. <laughs> no. Ah, uh, okay. Ask the internet. Yeah. Did I just sell personal information on there? I hope not. Let me just click away all this stuff. Um. Did no. That's not what I'm looking for. Lua. Uh. Program. Mm, uh. Arguments. I, don't know. I guess I've googled that before. Do do do. Uh, one, two, three. Yes, that's what I want to do. Dot, dot, dot. I know, I'm, I'm sure it was some dots in a freaking curly brackets, but I just can't remember the exact way of doing it. It shouldn't be hard to find, but variable number of arguments. Uh, God damn it. No, this is for functions, I don't want that. Um, passing command line arguments. 
Here we go. Yeah, it's three dots. Here we go. This is how you do it. Um, so that should work. So it's three dots. And then, yeah, should be fine. Alright. Save that. Oh, wait. Okay. That might have been the issue. No, are you crashing? No, you're not crashing. There you go. Four limit must be a number. Hmm. Is that so? Is that so? Height. I guess height is. Oh, yeah, height is never initialized. Whoops. Or is it? There it is. What do you mean, fast to be a number? It is a number. This is also a number. 4i is blah blah blah. Do. Blah, 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 blah. Four limit must be a number. Am I being a complete idiot here or what? Height. Did I misspell that? Or? Oh yeah. I did. Okay. Let's try that again. Height. One more time. Attempt to call nil. Move down. I don't have a move down function. Is that... Or is it just down? Move down? No, it's right here. What you oh, dig layer, oh whoops, just looking at the wrong line. Dig layer with a capital L. We're getting there. Okay, we got him. Right. Um, is this the right one? Yes. Good. Um, so now what we can do is we can grab the arguments that it gives here. Um, So we'll go if um, arguments at one. Uh, I think there's an is number function. I think I've used that before. And is number. So I'll, p I'll have some default values for the radius and the height, and then I'll uh, oops, have it override that in the uh, with the arguments. Okay, now hopefully that'll work, um, and if not, too bad. So we want um, dig cylinder. Um, and I'll have it do a. What do I do first? I do radius first, right? Yeah. So it's going to be a. Uh, let's say a 10 radius and a 3 height. Attempt to call nil at 6. I guess this doesn't exist, if I had to guess. Doo -doo. Lua is number. Checking if something is a number. Two number. I want to check if it is a number. Um, you're not helping me here, Internet. Christ. Determining if a string is numeric. Oh, that'll help. Um. God, I love these websites. Here's a million programming languages. Good luck. Uh, oh, this one. Two number. If to number A is unequal to oh god, okay. Well, maybe it's um, not a capital N. I'm pretty sure I've used is number before. Mm, no, okay. Then we'll do we'll do it their way. Fine. To number is not equal to this is so disgusting. So I want two number. And then this guy there is not equal to nil. That'll do. All right. So basically, the way this works, I haven't really explained that yet. If you do this, this is the magic 
magic way of having uh, input ver or input uh, parameters on your program, um, and it will just put them in order, the order in which you type them in. So uh, place number one in the array will be the first number or uh, letters you put in, and place number two will be the second set of uh, numbers or letters you put in. And you can just grab them by uh, grabbing any spot in the array you like. Um, and if there's nothing there, it will have a, a nil value, basically. So That's why I'm checking to see if there's actually something there, and uh, also checking to see if it's a number, because people can also put letters or whatever they like. Um, so you want to avoid uh, using letters in your for loops and stuff to check the bounds, because that will go horribly wrong. And I'm going to try this again. It did something. Okay, so in the... Oh, of course, yeah, because I changed it, because now it's going to be doing the smaller um, cylinder first, and it's going to slowly go outwards. So it's going to do 10 cylinders. I should have made this smaller, really. Alright, let's try this again. Come back, come back. Uh, okay. So let's make this um, big cylinder. I'll make it a 2. <laughs> it's going to be very small, and it's going to be too deep. There we go. So the first cylinder it makes is actually it's a 3x3 three three square, it turns out. And the second one it makes um, is not a square, it's slightly uh, different. You'll see it when it starts digging down. So it went back and now it's going back to the second, uh, the outside and the second uh, cylinder. And hopefully, um, once it finishes this one, this is the second uh, the radius is 2, so it shouldn't go any further than this. And it'll go down now. There we go. Right. So that's... Oh, no, here we go. This is, this is going to be the first cylinder, which is just a 3x3 three three square. And that goes back to the middle, and then out to the edge again. Super efficient, but whatever. <laughs> and then it digs out a couple more blocks. Okay. Right, so that's good. That's working. Um, basically, we're done with the cylinder now. That was it. <laughs> so, good job, everyone watching. That was four episodes of fun. Um, and it's done. So, yeah, you can you can determine how... Ooh, dig cylinder, you determine the radius and the first number. Second number is uh, how high you want it to be, or basically how deep you want to go. So we'll go top to bottom. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's basically your cylinder. And you can make it as big as you like, and you can, as long as you start at the top, make sure you uh, don't start at the bottom because it's going to go all wrong. Um, but yeah, you can of course you can edit the code the way, however you want um, to go, make it go bottom to top or whatever. Um, one other thing you could do, I just thought of now and completely forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh yeah, coordinates. Because at the moment I'm just starting, and that's going to be the center of the cylinder and the top center as well. Um, but what you could do is you could have it where you also input the coordinates of where you want the cylinder to be or to start um, and have it start from those coordinates but that's just a matter of having more input arguments and then um, rather than just starting at zero 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 you would have to copy out the go to function from the quarry and uh, stick that in here somewhere and then go to those coordinates um, and then when you're calculating the orientation you'll need to um, let me see, where do we do that? Here. Rather than just taking the x coordinates like that, you'd have to take um, the uh, your actual x coordinate minus the x center, which wherever it is, um, same for z, and then uh, multiply those together uh, to make sure you get the, the distance rather than some random value. Because you need the, the, the difference um, between the, the x value where you are and the center of the x. And because we start at zero zero zero, um, the difference is going to be you know x minus zero, which is still x. That's why we don't have to go uh, minus uh, x center here or something. Um, but otherwise, you would have to do that. Uh, but you can do all of that if you like. Um, I'm not going to do that because I can't be bothered. Um, you get the main principle of digging out a, a cylinder now, and uh, any more modifications you'd like to make, you can do that by yourself probably, with the help of uh, any other tutorials I've made. Um, so next episode, for or with this series anyway, I'm thinking about making a sphere, because that's pretty cool. Um, 
and it'll be a little bit more tricky than this. And they'll probably have a slightly different approach. Actually, maybe I won't. Oh. Um, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Rather than um, starting out with the rings in the middle and then slowly digging outwards, I might actually do it layer by layer um, with the sphere. That's another thing you could do here. Rather than um, digging out the outside circle, what you could do is just go to the outside and then start digging it layer by layer. So you do this first layer first, and then you do the second layer here, and then the third layer, um, and so forth. Um, it would mean you'd have to cover some ground twice as well, because let's say you start here and you dig this one out, then you're going to end up here and having to go that way and then go back again, um, and you have to do that for every row you do. So you're going to be losing some some efficiency there. Um, probably not as much as I do with my method here, um, but still some. There's probably ways you can do this, um, just do it really nightly in a s neatly in a spiral, um, but I, I no idea how to do that right now. Can't be bothered to think about it either. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this will end the cylinder part of uh, this series, uh, and we should be going on to spheres at some point. So thanks for watching, and see you next time. And hopefully I can freaking start this production line thing again, because that's also pretty cool. So, and once again, see you next time.